Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to test your website's speed with an open source suite of tools called sitespeed.io. Now, if you've been watching a lot of my videos, you'll notice that in the past, I've used sitespeed.io to conduct speed tests to compare different hosting providers. And um, through this video, I'm gonna show you kind of the steps that I go through in order to do that and some of the configuration files that I use to test site speed. So, um, you know, there's there's tools like uh, Google PageSpeed Insights and uh, Pingdom and stuff like that. And those are great tools, I use them too. Uh, but the reason that I like sitespeed.io so much is because um, I'm able to control the number of tests, I'm able to use scripting and uh, it's more of a programmatic way, a systematic way to do the website tests as opposed to through a web browser where you have to manually click. Uh, if you wanna do like 100 different tests, you have to manually refresh the, the Google PageSuite Insights page 100 times. So this way you can do 100 like back-to-back -back tests, take the average of them to get a, a real uh, good view of how a website speed performs over like a certain period of time. So, um, Let's go through this tutorial here and uh, show you kind of how some of that works. All right, so sitespeed.io, uh, that's the website. You can go to that in your URL. And right away, as long as you have Docker running, which I do have Docker running on my local machine, it's installed and everything, um, you can just copy this command to get started. And this will this will run a speed test on this URL the URL that we're currently on, sitespeed.io. So let's let's copy that. I'm gonna open up a terminal window. Now this could be, I'm on my local MacBook Pro, but this could be um, Linux, Ubuntu, anything like that. Let's go ahead and execute that. And by default, without any, um, I guess, sp specifying the number of times that the test is gonna be run, uh, it's going to be run three times. So you'll see that it's on the first iteration here. The default browser is Google Chrome. So that's the browser that it's like um, kind of artificially testing from in the background behind the scenes. And now it's on the second iteration and then I'll do the third iteration and it's spitting out the, the statistics as it's doing this. So. Um, if you're not familiar with some of these TTFB, that's time to first bite. Uh, the first iteration, it was 230, 321 milliseconds. The second iteration, 123 milliseconds. Um, DOM content load, 319 milliseconds. First paint, first content full paint, all that stuff. So, And then the final load time. So um, what's really cool about this is it automatically generates uh, HTML, uh, basically, a series of HTML pages that allow you to look at the results. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I open up a finder window here and go into uh, the root of my system for my home directory, and I go to, it created this for directory for me, site speed dash results. I can open up the, the website under test, that page, uh, the date and the time that the test was created, and then we'll find the index page in here. And this was, again, all automatically generated from running that speed test. So one page analyzed for this website, the website under test. It did three runs uh, using the Google Chrome browser version 89. And here is the average of those three runs. So the first paint, the first time that something actually showed up for the user, uh, 318 milliseconds on average. The whole page, uh, the page load time is 341 milliseconds, but it was fully loaded in 377 milliseconds. Uh, there's some more info. There's more information down here. The total number of requests. There's 12 requests. Seven were images. The total transfer size was 164.2 kilobytes. Um, so very useful information in my opinion. We can get even more detailed than this. So those same uh, metrics that we're looking at plus some more. We look at the min, the median, the mean, p90, and max. So we were looking at the mean before. Uh, right here, um, and that's what is a good one to look at to get the average of you know, all the tests that you run, the three tests that we run. Um, TTFB, time to first bite, that would be the, uh, where is that, the server response time. I think that's, or the, no, I think they call it backend time, yeah, backend time right here. Um, and that's just like from the initial request to the server, like acknowledging the fact that it received that request. So on average, 193 milliseconds. Yeah, lots of data here to, to sort through. Um, what else is cool is under the pages section, 
uh, we see that the only page under this test was um, this this one page. Um, if we click on this, there, there's some really cool stuff in here. So um, this is the first run, the second run, and the third run that was that was run for the this series of tests. So if you click on the first run, uh, it does a screenshot of what the page looked like under tests. It gives you a summary of all those uh, metrics and the values associated with them. Um, what I like to see is stuff like this, like the waterfall. This is what's actually happening behind the scene. So DNS lookup took um, this long, 39 milliseconds on average. Uh, actually, no, that's for this exact uh this this time was 39 milliseconds because we're looking at run one here. Uh, SSL took 107 milliseconds to resolve. Uh, it took 35 milliseconds to connect. It was waiting for 133 milliseconds. And then finally, some of these resources started to come in, like the CSS, JavaScript, the images. Um, there's seven images from what I remember. And then the icon file. So you can see visually how long it took those resources to be delivered to the user. And then finally, at this point, um, when you add everything up, like a timeline moving from left to right, uh, it was finished around here um, based on just looking at this. So um, metrics, um, we got some useful, potentially useful metrics here. What I want to show here is the, the video. So it actually kind of well, not kind of, it does record a video of the test, the page as it's being loaded, what it looks like. So that's I, I find that really cool that uh, it's this this testing tool is so sophisticated that it goes to the point of generating a video for every single test run um, that shows how the page is being loaded. So you can see like slowing this down, uh, first it loads like the header in the background and then it pretty much gets all the resources and loads those into the page. So um, you know, if you have a lot of stuff going on with your websites, your web pages, you can see kind of how that happens in a progression. Uh, let me see, is there anything else I want to look at in here? Uh, the coach the coach score is a good uh, thing to look at. It's a, it's a benchmark number, kind of like Google PageSpeed Insights. So they give you a total score, performance score, privacy score, best practice score. And uh, if there are some things wrong with it, it'll give you some advice on how to fix those uh potentially th those things that could potentially slow down the loading of your page. So for example, they're saying that um, there are scaled images. Okay, so if you don't scale your images, if you actually just serve the image the correct size, then um, you'll save yourself some sending some data over the network that's, uh, you know, not necessary. So uh, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, this has a pretty good coach score out of 100. And, you know, there's other stuff here. Uh, we, we won't look at that. Maybe the screenshot. That's the screenshot of the fully loaded page. And again, this you can see this information. It's different for each run. So you can see that for run number two and run number three. Um, up here, you also have uh, some other tabs. We won't go into this domains tab, top list tab, and assets tab. That's all of your individual assets. Not much to say about that. Um, but for now, let's get out of here. And I just want to show you how configurable and how powerful SiteSpeed.io could be. So if we go into the documentation section up here and we look at uh, SiteSpeed.io documentation, specifically when I look at some of the configuration options, and it actually says it here, there's a lot of things that you can do with SiteSpeed.io. So, uh, and that becomes immediately obvious when you just scroll through this page and see all of these command line options that you can configure uh, to kind of perfect the tests that you want to run. So uh, you can see there's different options for Firefox and Google Chrome and the Edge browser, Safari browser, all that stuff. Um, and you know, this page goes on and on and on and gives you some examples about how to incorporate some of those uh, options. And now, I, even for me, this is a lot of information to look through, but I have some options that I pretty much consistently used for a lot of my tests. So I'll go through some of those with you uh, right now. Wherever you want, I'm gonna do in my home directory here, we're gonna make a file called config.json and this could be anything, uh, you can name it whatever you want, but the standard I think convention is config.json. And um, these are the, the metrics that I typically use, except this is uh, 100 iterations. So I typically do 100 iterations. I typically can clear cache in between all of the individual iterations and I turn visual metrics off and I don't generate videos because as you'll see here, 
when you run the next test, um, the tests will run a lot quicker because you're not creating all of those visual assets. Um, and, and we won't do 100 tests, even though it's uh, even though it's a lot quicker with visual metrics turned off. Uh, we'll just do, like I had in here before, we'll do four tests. Um, and then I, I do typically use Chrome, but you can also do, you can type in like Firefox, you can, instead of Chrome, you can type in Firefox, Safari, and all those other browsers, Edge, Microsoft Edge, uh, if you want to test under a different browser. So let's um, let's save this file, and now uh, we will, I'll use the command that I was going to use up here. So uh, it's the same command as before, um, and then we're adding this dash dash config, and then pointing to the configuration file with all of our options in it. And then this is different from the command on sitespeed.io's homepage, so I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to name this test run Tony Teaches Tech, and then I'm going to pass it the URL that I want to test, which is uh, tonyteaches.tech. Okay, so let's run that. Um, this will run, like I said, four times. And don't worry that these these print out here. This is just the the current versions that are associated with Sitespeed.io. That doesn't mean we're testing under them. Uh, we're actually testing with Chrome again. So uh, Chrome version 89.0. This time's four iterations. We're already on the third iteration, so you can see it's a lot quicker than it was um, with the visual metrics turned on. And then Again, same as before, this is going to, it's finishing up now, but this is going to generate the HTML structure for us to look at. Um, and let's look at, see what that looks like. So let's open up a, a finder window here. We'll go back into my user directory and go to site speed results. So before we just had site speed .io, now we have Tony teaches tech, the date and the time that the run was created. And then uh, we'll find the index page. Here we go. We'll open that up with Chrome. And here we go. Uh, one page analyzed for Tony Teaches Tech. That was the home page. Uh, we ran four runs this time. And here's all of those metrics. So pretty much same as before. First paint, uh, fully loaded, page load time, all that stuff. Detailed summary, you get the min, median, mean, max. Uh, the pages. This time, if we dive into here, you'll see that we don't have... Uh, the the video being generated or anything like that and that's why the test ran a lot quicker um, and again we have four tests this time instead of three so um, that should give you guys a good overview of sitespeed.io kind of how I use it to test different hosting packages you can use this to test your your own website you can test it on a regular basis, set it up with a cron job or something, generate those results so you can look at those over time, how it changes. So many different things that you can do with it and that's why I like it. Um, very configurable as you can see. So let me know if you have any questions about this in the comments below. I do have a linked blog post about this as well that you can check out on my website. So uh, check that out as well. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.